Hello, good evening. Hello. Miss Sage, I'm just getting ready for our so along tonight. Hopefully you can hear me. Hopefully you found us. Good evening to everybody. Hi. Hi Nova. Hi Belle. Hi Sheila. Hi Tammy. Hi June. Hi everybody. Hello. Oh sorry, I hit my microphone then. So while we're waiting for everybody to come on, I'll just um, oil my machine, get ready. Hi Cindy. Hi Alison. Has everybody had a good day? I hope you have. It's seven o'clock here in the UK. It's ooh, a little bit sunny. A little bit sunny outside. I've spent the day um, going back and forth to my plaster corbels. I think they're pronounced corbels. Corbels? Corbels? Checking whether the um, paint stripper is working, kind of regretting starting it. If you've ever stripped plaster corbels, you'd understand why I might now be regretting it slightly. <laughs> Makes a lot of mess. No, I haven't even done one. I haven't even half done one. Hi. Hi, Anne. Hi, Sheila. Hi, Dawn. Hi, Helen. No, no, no snacks. And in fact, the apron is not just for aesthetic purposes or practical purposes. It's also because we had spaghetti bolognese for dinner purposes, which we won't mention. <laughs> so today we are on part two. So we're going to be sewing our linings. And I'm going to change the thread colour. So I've got grey in at the moment. I'm going to pop a pale blue to match my fabric. And I'm using my HD9 from Janome, which I need to tell you was sponsored for promotional purposes. And the fabric I'm using from Lewis and Irene was also sponsored for promotional purposes. Um, I am using crafted, and I paid for that. And I'm using a number five zipper continuous zip. I'm using from Sally Tomato, Sally Tomato, and I paid for that. And a number three zip in six inches from who knows where, but I paid for that as well. Right, so we get a bobbin wound while we're waiting. Hi, hi everybody. Oh, it's raining. Well, we've had a bit of rain and a bit of um, sleet and a bit of hail and it's sunny now, which is quite nice. Oh, hi. Hi, Helen. Hi, Tao. Hi, Taryn. Some nice young viewers today. Hi, Lynn. Hi, Sheila. Yes, I do love my machine. <laughs> um, hi, Lynn. Hi, Linda. Hi, Deb. Hi, everybody coming on. Nice to see you. Thank you for joining me. Get to see something fun today, actual sewing. Right, so let's get this threaded up. I've just oiled it and um, just spent a few minutes getting it threaded while everybody logs on, finds me. If you, um, if you keep an eye out during the day tomorrow for the event, notification if you're friends with me on Facebook then you'll have a little invitation to the event if you're not friends with me on Facebook but want to be then please do go on and friend request me and I'll accept afterwards um, I had a moment there I can't remember which side to thread it from and then you'll get notified in the event when I go live tomorrow Well, it's so long since I've done change bobbin. So long since I've had time to sew. Put it in the back front. This is a half bobbin. The Janome HD9. I have got a YouTube video on my channel um, with a little review of this machine if you want to pop on and have a look at it. Right, so we're oiled, we're threaded, got new colour. Got my pattern piece for the um, ends where we need to mark. I've got my book. 
So we're making the um, City Tote from the Complete Bag Making Masterclass. We are on page... Wait for it. 112. Um, so we did the stabilizers yesterday in the cutting and interfacing. Um, although I didn't do the um, step two there. Um, we'll do that tomorrow. Might make the slits for the strap anchors. Um, and then we're going to go straight on to step three today. So the lining construction. So let me talk you through what we've got. So I've got my pattern piece. We'll need that. And I've got number five zip for my zip divider. And I've got continuous there. Um, and I need a number three zip. All of this is in the um, material supply list at the start of this one. Um, a, a blue, I think, will be fine. Although if you wanted to go for a pop of colour, this is quite an easy way to do that. Just choose a contrasting zip. That'd be okay, won't it? Yep, that'd be fine. Okay. If you're not sure, sometimes it helps to just have a look at it through your um, phone camera and see how it looks. Get a better view then. Right, so I've got my pattern piece, my book, my number five zip, my number three zip. Um, so if you are not aware of the difference between number five and number three zips, there is a section in the front of the book. Um, let's see if it's in tools. I think it's in tools and supplies. Um, which details the difference in zips. You would think I'd know, wouldn't you? <laughs> yep, yeah, here it is. So on page 17, there's a little section about um, zips, but basically um, the number of a zip refers to the size of the teeth. So number three zip has got three millimetre wide teeth. And number five has got five millimetre wide. Although, um, double check, because quite a lot of number five zips sold as number five are actually four and a half or four or six so um if you're buying continuous zip get the pulls at the same time as you get the tape just to be sure that they definitely fit right and let's sort out all of my pieces here so i've got my i've cut some of these out of my exterior fabric for contrast so i've got my slip pocket here and I've got my uh, zip pocket top, my zip pocket facing, and my zip pocket bottom. So actually, I'm in the um, opposite order in the book. So zip pocket facing is E1, zip pocket bottom is E... Hang on. Might be wrong there. So E1 is the zip pocket facing. The zip pocket top, which is the um, taller bit, that is E2, and that's what I've put from contrast, so that when you open the zip pocket, you can see that nice fabric inside. And then the zip pocket bottom, E3, I've cut from my lining fabric. I've also got four pieces of zip divider, and I've got two cut out of my exterior fabric for a nice contrast. And I've got two cut out of my lining fabric, which will be inside. So um, when you see the zip divider in the bag, you'll see um, lining panels of the main bag. And then you'll see the contrast of the zip divider fabric. But then inside the zip divider will be the same lining. Um, pop those to one side, so we'll come to those second. And then I've got two pairs, so four in total, of these side end pieces that are shaped, and they're mirrored. So I've got two like that, and two like that. And we can put those to one side. And then I've also got two lining pieces for my main bag. So we will use one of those for the um, pockets and we'll use one of those later. One of them doesn't have any pockets on at all, but you can always add extra pockets. And you can go back in the book and add different pockets. So you can add another zip pocket, slip pocket, divided slip pocket, a lip balm credit card and 
slip pocket combo thing you can um, you know you can really choose what you add to this so if you haven't marked your centers top and bottom do that on the wrong side and oh I put these to one side but we need to make some marks don't we so on our end panels before we forget now you're supposed to do this um, when you cut them out you're supposed to transfer the markings um, Oh, I can't remember where you meant to transfer them, but you meant to have done them earlier, but we didn't because we ran out of time yesterday. I was tired. I was ready for bed. So you just lay your pattern piece on from the other side. And there's one mark here on the center line and there's one mark here. So this is where you're going to start and stop sewing your side seam. And this is where you're going to line up your zip divider to. So don't worry too much about which is which for the minute. Just mark them onto your pattern piece. And I'm going to use a pencil on the wrong side. And then that'll give us an indication. And what I've done on my pattern piece, so I've just cut a slit so that I can fold that back and do my mark change for you so you can see that a bit better so I've got one mark there and that's for the zip divider placement and then one mark near the bottom for where my seam is going to go I'm going to do that on all four pieces now so that they're done and then when we come to them later um, we'll feel nicely prepared two just flip your pattern piece over it um, lines up on the wrong side of your fabric I have fused my um, sew fuse which is a woven interfacing um, I'm not using the sew fuse plus I'm just using the regular sew fuse it's got slightly heavier weight than the violin um, woven which is quite nice for bag making but it's not as thick or as heavyweight as the Sew Fuse Plus. Um, I know somebody asked that yesterday, so if you're watching today, that's the answer to your question. So let's check in with everybody. Um, my mic is crackling. Okay, I'm really sorry about that. Let's see how I can um, rectify that, see if I can turn myself. Change volume maybe slightly. Maybe the positioning on my apron. Hopefully that will, um, that will help. Uh, hi everybody, hi, hi everybody. Lovely to see you. Uh, you got the pieces cut out yesterday, great, you're ahead. Brilliant, hi from Sweden, hi TT, hi Anne. Um, so, Anne, my zippers were attached to the ring. So I have got, and I can't take credit for this, I saw this on um, my friend Alicia's um, photos and she told me how so from Ikea, you can get, let me change camera so you can see. You can get these curtain rings that have got a clip on them. So what I do is I sort all of my zips into color order and then clip maybe, um, you know, six or seven to a clip in one go. And then I've got clear shower rings that I just pop them on. And then on the side of my cutting table, um, which is actually a kitchen eye, I've got um, metal hooks, they come with it. Or, well, you get six with it, and I've um, ordered some more from Ikea. And then they just hang on, which is nice and handy. Um, let's see. Oh, Varna, that's fine, no problem. Hope you... Have a good day and we'll see you when you come back. Hi Janelle. Oh, Moira, yes. We could help with that. I'm sure we could help convince Pete. Essential, essential work tool, isn't it? Right, so let's get started with our pockets. We're gonna make a zip pocket first. So we'll need our zip pocket facing and our zip bottom and top. I'll put my slip pocket out of the way so we don't get confused. 
So on this, the bottom is always an inch shorter than the top. And then the facing is the same width, but only one and eight, one and three eighths of an inch high. And back to this one. So what we're gonna do first, we're gonna draw a box on this facing. And if you've done this method before, this is, um, you'll know this one. This is how to do a hidden zip, hidden tape zip pocket. And you can do this on any pattern. You just modify the technique. So we're gonna draw a line half an inch from each long edge. And an inch from each short edge. And you can then draw in the middle a line down the centre and a triangle at each end. And it doesn't have to be exact, that's just where you're going to cut through later. So that's my facing. And then I'm going to position that on my lining main panel. Here, let me move my same machine slightly so you can see. Oh, I can't move my cutting mat too, too far. I bought a new calendar, a new wall calendar, one of these massive ones. And um, it's underneath my cutting mat, sort of flattening out before I put it on the wall. Can you see it under there? <laughs> They always come rolled, don't they? Right, so this is where I didn't mark the centre of my facing and I should have done. So I'll do that now. But I know I've marked the centre of my lining. So I can just transfer that to the right side. Inside the seam allowance. Um, so it's not seen right. And we're placing this on here. Now all of the measurements for this are in your book um as i said yesterday we can't tell you all of the dimensions and all of the measurements and things um for copyright reasons because we don't um hold the copyright the publishers do so for the um positioning of these you'll need to look at the book um we're on page 112 so all it says is to insert a zip pocket into the lining panel and it tells you the um, positioning of it but for the actual instructions of how to do the zip, uh, zip pocket you need to go back to the orange section in your book and that will talk you through the method okay all right so I'll just pin that into place at the sides and then we're going to sew around all four sides of this box and I'm going to use a short stitch length. Uh, hang on, which way am I going? That way. I'm going to use a short stitch length because it means that um, you don't have to worry so much when you get to the corners. It's easier to stop and pivot. So on this one, I'm going to use a stitch length of two. Oh, Sheila, that is exciting. I love starting a new, new book, especially something where you can get creative. Sounds great. So I start um, kind of part way along the line and I'm gonna sew all the way round and I'm gonna stop at the corner with my needle down, lift up my foot and pivot and then keep sewing. Well, obviously put my foot back down again, sorry, and then keep sewing. sewing quite slowly today because I've only just started and I'm still enthusiastic and keen to get it neat. Might be different by nine o'clock tomorrow. So I'm using the single stitch needle up and down to um, go around these or get close to these corners. There you go, now just back stitch a couple. 
couple to get back to the um, start. Right, so now I can trim my threads a little bit long because it was a fresh, fresh bobbin in there. And then I'm going to, um, now normally I advise pressing first, but today I'm going to um, cut through the slip first and then press afterwards because I'm just aware that yesterday I was talking for a long time and I don't want you to be listening to me for too long today if you could get on and sew. So using a knife, I just cut a little slit down that centre line to start with, just where I can get my scissors in neatly. Um, this is a slice by, can't read it, I don't know, slice by someone. It's, I think it's a craft knife, maybe it's a slice um, on there. It's meant to be ergonomic, I think. Um, I mean, it's fine. And then I pop my scissors in and I try and use the smallest ones I've got. I have seen people demonstrate doing these um, zip pockets with whacking great big shears out to here and then cutting the um, tiny points. I think, oh, I don't think I would be able to cut into the corner with those. So you're just cutting along the center line and then each triangle to the corners to each side of the point. And try and get as close as you can without snipping through or into your stitches. What you can do if you're not confident is you can pop a pin in um, through the corners of this like you would if you were dressmaking and then that'll ensure you don't go too far. So if you've ever done buttonholes in dressmaking that's the same, um, same principle, same technique. I am not a dressmaker, I'm very much not a dressmaker, but we did do dressmaking at school, so I think some of these things I've remembered from school. Okay, so I've cut through that, so I'll swap you back because we're going to do a little bit of pressing now. Um, I've got my ironing board off to the side again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to press directly on top first and then I'm going to pull this facing back and press from one side and then I'm going to push it back the other way and press from the other side and then I'm going to press from each end so um, let's see if I can show you that on close up so I'm going to pull that up and press that way pull it down and press that way and then pull up each side and press from that side and then um, it will just help ensure that this is a really nice, neat, crisp finish when you push it through. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do before I even think about pushing it through. So I'm going to press directly on top to start with. And then pull it down and press against the stitches. And I'm going to turn it round and do it from the other side. I do find that because this so fuse has got a little bit more weight to it, it does give a nice um, crisp finish on things like creases and pleats and things. Um, so things like this zip pocket facing, it's quite nice. I should say um, the owner and creator of so fuse, Monica, she does work for us here at Mrs H, um, just in case that's relevant to anything. Right. I've pressed that into place and now I can poke it through, poke facing through and it's quite fiddly, it's only a little tiny thing. I'm just pulling that through to the wrong side. So I'll flip that over so you can see, so it's pulled through to the right side. Now what I'm going to do is, don't worry too much about the other side while you're doing the first side, just finger roll that into place. finger roll that into place and give it a press and then worry about the other side finger roll that and press that into place okay. a little bit extra time spent on pressing this will give you a really good finish um, and I think this is where it makes um, 
really makes a difference to be a little bit more meticulous. Some things you can just, you know, give it a quick press and get on. But I think this one, if you want a neat zip pocket, this is one that you do have to spend a bit of time, unfortunately. Okay, so one side, once you've pressed it, it kind of stays in place then. More or less. And just roll that into place. And just manipulate it so that the facing is behind and you can't really see it, but the seam is pressed out or pushed out, sorry. And if you're getting close to your fingers, just give a little a little blow and it will blow the steam away from your fingers. Um, quite often. Now I find that with zip pockets, inevitably you usually do get a crease in the corners. So I think by doing it this way and pressing from the front first and then turning it over and pressing from the back, any creases that you're going to get are sort of hidden on the back. And because this is um, this method hides the zip tapes, so you're not even going to see. Um, the facing in the finished finished pocket is just to hide those zip tapes. So that's the back and um, my zip facing is pushed all the way through. So while that's um, just cooling down, I'm going to set that to one side and get on with sewing the zip into the pocket and then we'll come back and do this. So don't add any double sided tape to that just yet. Hang on for that one. Um, right now I'm going to flip back to the instructions so that I make sure that I've got my pieces the right way up and I did use two different shades of orange for this one. I need to get some of those little sticky things on the top you know so that I can just um, flip to it. Right okay so I've got my zip pocket button which is a smaller piece and my fabric is um, non-directional for this one so it doesn't matter but I am going to mark the centers because my zip is quite a bit longer than my fabric and make sure that you've got it the right way around so in the um, cutting out instructions dimensions are width by height so make sure you've got it the right way around before you um, apply your zip to it and while we're at it I'll mark the center of this one as well And this fabric is directional, so I'm going to make that mark on the top. And my zip, I'm going to mark the centre of this one. Now, because this could be seen, I'll use my chalk pen for this one. And this one's just a Chaco liner, if you've heard of that. it's um, It's got chalk dust in the reservoir here and a little tiny metal wheel. So as you... Um, sort of roller along it, um, along your fabric, it leaves a little line of chalk dust behind, uh, which you can use as your mark. And then it literally just brushes out because it's only chalk dust. Right, oh, I need some tape, double-sided tape. I thought I'd run out of this yesterday. I was panicking slightly, thinking, oh no, I've run out. And then I went and looked in my notions drawer. Now I would like to point out that I do like to consider myself a minimalist and I like one with a small stash. Um, but anyway, I found three rolls of it, so we're okay. So I'm just gonna put a line of this. This is the quarter inch um, wash away quilter's tape. I do find it goes a bit dry on the end if you don't sew very often. Actually, I'll put those scissors out keep my paper scissors out and I'm going to put a line along the very top edge of my zip pocket bottom and if you've got directional fabric make sure that the um, you're putting tape along the top edge of it. And now I need my zip and I can see from the pattern piece that my fabric is the right side up and my zip also needs to be the right side up. Oh dear. Put my marking on the wrong side. There you go. And you just line up the centre there. If you've got the right size zip, then it will just fit perfectly on your fabric anyway. Um, and you're lining up the top edge 
of the fabric with the raw edge of the zip tape. And then we're going to whiz along there with a, well, a quarter of an inch seam allowance, although I usually tend to do a scant quarter inch. Um, and we can go back to our normal seam uh, stitch length here. This is literally just to hold it in place on the fabric. Probably should have said if you've got a zip foot and you want to change to it, now is the time to do that. Um, I use my walking foot, it's quite a narrow foot anyway, but um, I like my walking foot because it's nice and wide and um, holds everything in place, holds all the layers in place. So now that we've stitched that into place, and it might seem like it's wrong because it's um, the right side of the zip on the right side of the fabric, and when you fold it back, you've got the right side of the zip on the wrong side of the fabric, but that is correct. So we're gonna fold that over and just, I mean, the tape, the double-sided tape is quarter of an inch. So just fold it back to the edge of the tape and we're gonna give that a quick press into place. Uh, just on my side here. So then that's what it looks like. So we've got the wrong side of the fabric and the right side of the zip. And then we will need our zip pocket bottom. Now this is the top to me because this has got directional, well, I'm saying it's directional fabric. It's not really because that's upside down and that's the right way around. So I think we'd be okay. But if you've got directional fabric, make sure you're working with the top edge and put your tape along the top edge. And this is the zip pocket bottom I've got now. So I've put my tape on the top edge and then I'm gonna turn that 180 degrees. So this is now on the bottom nearest me. And I'll peel that tape off or the backing tape and lining up the centers of the zip again and the center of my fabric I'm lining up the raw edge of the fabric with the edge of the zip tape. Just make sure that all lines up neatly. So I'll turn it around. So this is what you'll see. So this edge here, you can see that's the zip pocket bottom E2. This is zip pocket top E3. And if you've got directional fabric you'll be able to see that now this bottom edge matches this bottom edge and my top edges are both attached to the zip or well, they will be so now I'm going to sew through uh, sew along this one same as we did before should probably open my zip for sew if you've got any questions about sewing this please do ask them in the comments I'll come and check again in a minute So I'm back stitching at the start and end of this as well, just to be sure that it's secure. If I miss anybody's questions, um, I'll come back and answer them after we've finished. So again, I'll go to the um, ironing board and just press that um, along that edge of the quarter inch tape. And that just helps it sit nice and flat little shot of steam help things stay neat right so this is what I've got now Let me switch back again so on the side of the zip so that's the wrong side of the zip that's right side there I've got the right side of the fabric so I've got the uh, top of the pocket and the bottom of the pocket and at the moment, that should look um, upside down because when we fold it down, it will then look right, if that makes sense. And then on the other side, I've got the wrong side of the fabric and the right side of the zip. And how it's gonna work is once you sew that in, this is gonna come down to meet the 
uh, bottom there and that will form your pocket with the zip being attached to your lining. So get your lining panel that you had before with your facing on and now we're going to add a line of double sided tape to the top and bottom edges of this opening to this box. Now don't add your tape to the zip because oftentimes then you'll need to um, wiggle it or maneuver it and you might sew it and then end up with a little bit of tape showing. Whereas if you put the tape on the box, you definitely, definitely won't see it through that window. I'll put my tape away for the minute, although we'll need it again later. Um, so I get my tape from Amazon might not have asked but I'm just anticipating if you have asked Got my tape from Amazon um, six rolls at a time I think it is or 12 rolls who knows um, I can try and dig out a link for you when I come off um, go back into my history right so I've added tape to the top and bottom of those and now so that it's facing me I'm going to put my zip pocket like this so this is the top and this is the bottom so this will be backwards to you um, I'll try and do it so that it's right for you actually okay so for from your point of view this is the top and this is the bottom and this is my zip right sides up and I'm going to move my zip pull to the middle ish there then you get your lining panel and pop that over the top now the aim is to zip perfectly through that gap and to make sure I'm just making sure uh, sorry I'm just pulling back my lining panel and I'm making sure that my facing is level with the edge of my pocket pieces and then once I'm sure that is then I can make sure that the, um, the teeth of the zip are perfectly aligned in the center of that opening and this tape, you can reposition it slightly, so don't be afraid to manhandle it into place. Right, so once you're happy with that, keep everything flat still. So on the back, you've got the zip pocket top, zip pocket bottom, and wrong side of the lining. So keep everything flat and now I'm going to sew around the opening, this box opening, and I'm going to start here in the bottom corner because I think this is least noticeable in a bag. So I'm going to start there and I'm going to sew all the way around. Again I'm using my short stitch length um, and if you get to the corner and you can't quite make it to the corner, go right the way down to a stitch stitch length number one and just do a couple of teeny weeny little stitches to get you to where you need to be. So I'm going to sew all the way around that and then I'll have a check of comments so if you've got any questions do pop them in now and I'll come back and have a look at those. So I'm going to start with my needle down so that when I get to the corner and pivot my needle's in the right place. Not sure if you noticed there, I didn't back stitch at the start of this one. I'm going to pull the threads through. So I'm sewing this at a quarter of an inch away from the edge, and I've stopped with my needle down, lifted my foot, and moved that zip pull out of the way. So once you think you get to the corner, you can stop with your needle down and pivot. I need to do one more little stitch. There we go. And then that'll give me the correct seam allowance on the edge. And I go really slowly around zip pockets because I think, oh, they need to be neat. I'm sure nobody actually looks at them. <laughs> And I'm sure I never notice if my zip pocket is neat or not. But yeah, that's fine. I'm just 
gonna test yeah so that's fine now I'm gonna stitch over just for a couple of stitches where I started and then instead of my thread cutter on the machine I'm just gonna lift my needle up and pull out so it threads along And then from the wrong side, you can use the bobbin thread to pull that front thread through to the back. Once you've got a little loop there, just pop a needle in. You can pull it through to the back and tie that off. And then that will secure your stitches without having to do back stitching at the start and the end. There's nothing wrong with doing back stitching. It just gives you a slight... I remember when I was learning to sew in um, high school and when it said do um, a couple of stitches back stitch, I went like half the row with back stitch. I didn't realise it meant a couple of stitches. Right, so that looks good from the front. Let me swap back to the main view and we'll check if there's any questions. I'm a little bit ahead of you, so I um, wanted to leave time for questions. Let's have a look. Um, hi everybody, no plant, no one, no. Well, here's the thing, I put the plant out thinking, oh, it might need some fresh air, and it was raining, and I think plants like a bit of rain. And um, so I put it out, and then my husband reminded me that it's a fake plant and it doesn't need the rain. <laughs> but it's still kind of soggy, so I didn't want to bring it in. <laughs> but you can see my nice orange pine door that we haven't painted yet <laughs> and it's, it's kind of cute because my husband said why don't you put a bit of fat drape a bit of fabric over it and then it will look pretty and i thought yeah he doesn't quite get that <laughs> um right hi everybody hi hi lovely to see you um, thanks for the link to Chaco liners. Yes, I've got, I've only got grey and white, but they do come in lots of colours. Um, Alison, I'll come back to you with a link for that. I think that it was on, um, Amazon. Oh, well done for remembering to open my zip. I did forget. Let me open that again. Pretend that's, um, on purpose. So remember to leave your zip open. Probably says it in the instructions. Um... One side is usually longer than the other, but why don't we make that pattern prior to cutting the pattern? Or is there a reason why we make it one longer? Okay, so the reason why you make the top, the pocket top, one inch longer than the pocket bottom is so that when you fold it over to meet at the bottom, you've got a little bit extra here. Swap you back so you can see. You've got a little bit extra here folded over so that it's not pulling. So if it was exactly the same length, that would be pulling there. So if you ha didn't have it an inch longer, it would come to around about there and it would be pulling. So then on the inside of your bag, you would have a bit of an awkward situation there where it was pulling down. So by having it an inch longer, it just gives you a little bit extra wiggle space and we'll sew that into place, that little fold over. Um, we'll sew that into place so that it just doesn't put any extra strain on your lining and actually any weight in your pocket doesn't tend to pull your lining down um, from the centre. So that's why it's slightly longer. Um, Moira, yeah I do. This, uh, the HD9, the walking foot is very narrow anyway so I just use the one eighth of an inch marker on there um, and it gets quite close to... Um, to the zip. So short stitch length. I've got mine on number two um, for that. My usual stitch length on this machine is a number three. So I use a number six for basting, number three for normal stitching, and number three is actually really good for top stitching as well. But for going around and doing things that um, you need it to be accurate, I find number two is good. Um, I'm you, Dalva, I'm using Sofuse. I'm not using the Sofuse Plus. I'm just using the regular Sofuse. Um, Sofuse Plus is, I believe, a little bit more sturdy. So I think that might be a bit too much in my um, in my lining. 
Uh, yes, that is one way to clean fake plants. <laughs> oh, hand sewing. Now, I am terrible at hand sewing. Really bad. So, well done to you for that. <laughs> right, so now we've done this. So, this is where we should be up to now. And you should have your zip half open if you haven't opened that now. And then fold this down to meet at the bottom and as we said this is not going to match perfectly at the top you need to have that little fold in there and I'm going to pin it in the corners I'm going to pin it away from the corners because I'm terrible for sewing through pins and I'm trying to train myself out of it so only pin through the lining layers and this one we're not leaving a turning gap in the bottom of the zip pocket the bag is too big to sew um, through, uh, to pull through and um, we're leaving a um, turning gap in one of the side seams um, which is also too large and too close to pull through zip pockets so we can't even do a double berthing if you know what that is if you don't um, so back in the day when we um, used to do patterns we always used to leave the turning gap in the bottom bottom of the bag and turn it through and then seal it up and then some bright sparks said why don't we leave the turning gap in the zip pocket I wish it was me but it wasn't <laughs> and then we were able to turn our bags through the hole in the zip pocket and then your um you know where you close the turning gap was hidden in there but if your bag base is too small or too narrow what you can do or your zip pocket is too narrow sorry what you can do is leave a gap in the bottom of the lining and in the bottom of your zip pocket. So then you turn it through the bottom of the lining. And then once you've done that, you pull both of these bottom layers back through your zip pocket to close the turning gap. And then you've got a turning gap in the zip pocket to close. So it's like a, a double turning gap. So you end up with a nice finish to the bottom of your lining and the... Um, well, it's always ugly for me because I machine stitch it, but when you close your turning gap, then it's still in the zip pocket. But on this bag, it's too big, it's too wide to do that. So on this one, you don't need to leave a turning gap in the bottom of the zip pocket because we're going to be turning it through a, um, a side seam. So where we get to this edge, let me swap you back to the close view we've got that little fold in the top there which we talked about and I'm pinning don't need to use as many pins as me I just like to so I'm I've got all of the layers of the zip pocket together so I've got the facing the zip and the zip pocket pieces together and I've pinned those but completely independent from the lining panel um, and sometimes I sew it like this with the lining panel up. And sometimes I sew it like this and pull the lining panel out of the way. And there's no rhyme or reason to it. And I don't think it makes much of a difference. So I'm going to sew it this way so that you can see what I'm doing a little bit easier. And this one, um, I, I tend to just do a quarter of an inch seam on this so that you get a nice big zip pocket back stitch at the start and the end and we're going to sew around all three sides of this so stop at the corner lift your foot and pivot the top and I'd just like to backstitch over where the zip teeth are just for a bit of extra security on that pocket along the top of course because that's attached into your facing let's take all of these pins out and um, oh yes yeah, so I said about leaving your zip halfway open that's only if you're turning it through but we don't need to in this case 
So there's our zip pocket and you can have a little look inside and as you open it, I've got my exterior fabric inside as a little pop of interest in there. And then the back of it is just my lining fabric, but um, inside is my exterior fabric. Um, right, so now, because my zip was longer, I can snip off these extra tails from the zip end. The scissors don't work very well if you don't take the guard off. Okay, there we go. So that's the zip pocket done. Uh, so next we will do the slip pocket. So we'll flip back to the city tote. Oh, I've gone too far. There we go. So we've done the zip pocket. And now, oh, so it says pin the zip pocket out, out of the way for the next step. We'll do that. Sometimes I listen to myself. And then it says make a simple slip pocket using the lining slip pocket. So that's this one. So to do that, we would flip back to the orange section, find out how to do a simple sl slip pocket, which is basically just fold it in half. So around three edges, leaving a turning gap. So that's what we'll do. Put my pins a little bit further out of the way. And I'm gonna leave my turning gap in the bottom. Just make sure that you're double checking the dimensions on these pattern pieces as you're folding them and sewing them. So they're always width by height in my patterns. So same as the other, so back stitch at the start and I'll backstitch at the end. So um, for this though, I'm gonna sew along where my turning gap would be. So I've backstitched here, sewn down the side. Um, let me swap you back so that you can see. And then I've stopped to pivot and I'm gonna sew to about there and backstitch. And then stop where your needle down and increase your stitch length. And I like to take mine up to number six. And then I'm gonna sew along the bottom for a bit. And this will form my turning gap. So now I've stopped again with the needle down, swap back to my usual stitch length and back stitch a couple of times. Went too far then, I was getting, getting distracted. Um, and then we'll keep going to the corner. And pivot. So if we look at this, and I'll point out to you, so I've got back stitching here and here, because that's the start and the end, but I've also got back stitching here and here, which is the start and end of my turning gap. But across the turning gap, I've um, used my basting stitch. I'm gonna go to the iron and I'm gonna fold these seam allowances back and press them. So first I'm gonna press it flat, and then I'm gonna fold these back and press them out of the way. And then when we turn it through, it will give us a really nice crisp edge to work with. So I'll press that first, my steam iron. Just give it a second to cool down before you um, scold your fingers. And then fold one seam allowance back and give it a little press. You could do that all the way to the corner if you want. Doesn't matter. Okay, so I've folded one back and then flip to the other side and fold the other one back. You don't have to do this, this just gives you a really neat finish on that turning gap then. Good bit of steam as we said yesterday. Okay. So now I'm gonna remove the stitches from that turning gap. So in between those two lots of um, back stitching, between there and there. So 
So I need to find where my stitches change and just put the um, ball of the seam ripper in. Just change it back to the place one for this one. So I found where the start of my turning gap was, popped my, put the ball of the seam ripper in and just whiz along there. And you'll you'll kind of if you go gently, you'll feel a little bit of resistance when you get to that back stitching. Or again, you could put in a pin at that back stitching just to make sure you don't go too far. Okay, and I'm going to pull the stray threads out from that turning gap. I remember my textiles teacher when I was in high school also reminding me that this was an unpicker, not a stitch ripper. And I've just stitch ripped so. Sorry, Mrs. Randall. If only I made something of myself. <laughs> right, so now we've got that um, neat turning gap. We're going to clip the corners. So what I like to do is I like to do these top corners near the fold and I go really close and taper out. So that's the top corner there. I've gone quite close. Don't cut into your stitching, but just fairly close. And then in the bottom corner here, I do a cut across into that angle. I don't know if you can focus on that. Okay, so if I do it this way, I might be able to see a bit better. So I've done my one cut across, and then I'm going to do a second cut tapering into the seam allowance there. I think that was the most awkward bit of trimming I've ever done. <laughs> but give it a go and um, that is also in the book actually. I believe it's in the finishing techniques. Uh, double check. Resizing, no. Professional touches, there we go, not finishing techniques. Yes, yeah, so on page 76, it teaches you that technique as well about the double cuts. Uh, just this middle picture there. Okay. Right, so I'll do that on my other two corners as well. And then we can turn this right sides out. How do I like the safeties? I love it, Jackie. Yeah, I really, really like it. And I'm not just saying that because Monica works for us. Um, I really like it. It's got a beautiful, beautiful hand. It fuses really well. Um, it's just really lovely. Sheila, that's something you can do on any bag as well. So you can, um, you can change your zip pocket to be like that on any bag. Uh, Jenny, no. So she's in the US, um, but I paid the price I paid for shipping seems to include customs because I didn't end up paying any customs fees. So I don't know if that just um, you know just sailed through, and usually there are customs fees, or I don't know if they're included, or um, or if I didn't maybe. No, I know I spent enough. I, I bought ten yards of it. It is in yards. So just bear that in mind, but it's really wide. It's something like 60 inches wide or 54 inches wide. Um, so you do get a lot. Right, so I've turned my pocket through. Oh, look at the mess here. Hang on. Sweep these off into my bed. So I've turned my pocket through and then I've got my crochet hook, trusty crochet hook, which I never use for crocheting because I think. And I've pushed out each of the corners but then I've also run this hook along the side seams. So from the inside, run it along the seams and that will push that seam out. And again on the bottom. And we've already got our it really neatly there. So now we can give this a little press and just make sure everything's nicely lined up before you press it nice and flat and choose which side you want to be your um, your right side 
So I think this is going to be my right side. And I like to press from the right side so that I know that it's definitely nice and neat on that right side where people are going to be seeing it. Especially if you're using um, contrast fabric. So if you're using your exterior fabric as a pocket on your lining, it's going to be slightly more um, visible. Okay, so that's pressed nice and neat. And I'll give that a little top stitch along the folded edge using a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance and my usual stitch length which is number three. Okay. Lovely. Right. So now we need to put this onto the lining panel. So I've got my lining panel that we've got the zip pocket in. My zip pocket is, is uh, pinned up out of the way. So then I need to transfer onto the right side my center marking at the bottom there. And let's find out in the pattern how far up we need to put it. So it does tell you, um, attach the slip pocket to the lining center panel that has the zip pocket. And it tells you how far to position it up from the bottom edge in the book there and that is on page 112 and we're on step four attach the slip pocket so i've got my ruler at the right place and i'll just find my center of my pocket and make sure that is lined up so my center of my pocket matches the center of the lining and i can pin that into place now this fabric was provided for us for promotional purposes from Lewis and Irene. So I think this bag is going to end up on their stand at the trade show um, that we go to. They um, we go to a trade show each year where we sell our wholesale goods to retailers so that they can stock it in their shops. So I think they wanted some more up-to-date bags. I think the last bag we provided them with was something like 2018 or 2017 or something I think the range was uh, now I'm going to put my label in here so if you've got labels um, little seam labels what I like to do is pop it in the side of a slip pocket before I sew it into place um, and I'll tell you where mine are from mine are from Naked Labels well I think are in Wales to be honest it's so long ago that I ordered and I think I only ordered about hundred and I've still got loads of them left. <laughs> really should make some more bags. But don't bother to put them in ones that I'm practicing on or ones that aren't quite right. I only put them on ones that I think will be nice. I'll just fold that in half and slip it under the edge of the slip pocket and then pin it into place. So as you're stitching the pocket into place that will hold that in under the side of the pocket there. So I'll stitch this into place and I'm going to start at the top here and I like to do, I like to start on the lining and then go onto the pocket, do a couple of back stitches and then go all the way down, pivot along, pivot up and do the same on the other side just to secure it. And you can divide this pocket if you want, you can divide it. Um, so if you sew it into place first and then measure an inch or an inch and a half in, you've got a um, pen pocket or you can put your phone in so you can stitch it into place, pop your phone in, work out where you need to stitch it for your um, phone or tissues or hand sanitizer, which before this year or before last year wasn't really a you know, major concern for handbags, was it? So we'll stitch that into place and then we'll see if there's any more questions. So if you've got questions, please do ask them. Um, and if I miss them, please, please do um, either repeat your question and I'll I'll try and catch it or I'll catch up after the sew along. Oh, I don't know what I've done here. I've got my self caught. There we go. I think I have my zip pocket underneath and I don't want to sew through that. Not intentionally. three sides of this. Okay. 
and you can just back stitch over where your label is. Now I always add a few extra bits of back stitching at the stop and the start ever since I made my nappy bag and um, I realised that my husband wasn't just putting things in the pockets, he was thrusting things into the pockets and I thought right I better secure every pocket from now on. He was you know he was properly making sure that things were in the pockets so um, yeah so if you want to divide it you can I'm going to leave this as it is because I think this is going to be a display bag um, and I don't want to risk extra wobbly stitches on a display bag so we'll lump in the zip pocket so now we've got a zip pocket and a slip pocket in one lining panel and I've got my um, pop of contrast fabric there as well so um, if you want to add extra pockets in this you can do this on both panels both lining panels that would work really well just realize i've got a crease in that one let's get the crease out before we move on um but yeah you can easily add extra pockets um this way now if you wanted to do something like a water bottle pocket if you left the zip divider out and cut the lining side panels the same as the exterior side panels then you could easily just cut another set of exterior or oh, sorry lining side panels so cut them on the fold but instead of just cutting the two maybe cut four and then you can sew two together at the top maybe cut them down slightly short sew two together at the top and insert them into that seam as like a patch pocket right let's see if there's any questions and i better have a little drink Hi everybody, come in. Hi Sharon, lovely to see you. Hope you're okay. Um, yeah, I'm, I mean I never crochet. Just use it for turning out pockets. Um, turning things through. Well, see this is the thing Sheila. I did think that's quite handy having the two pockets close together. See this goes down and forms the base of the bag. So it's not, um, your pocket isn't as high as it seems here. So when your bag is finished and it goes down, that forms the base of the lining. So this will be hopefully sitting right on the bottom of your bag. So then you've got a zip pocket and a slip pocket. It's not too close to the top. You should have a magnetic snap in here if you follow the pattern exactly. Or you can sew your side panels on and then sew, add two magnetic snaps. And I'm not going to use any magnetic snaps on this one. Right, so we've done that panel. So what do we do now? Right sides together, match the tops of each side seam. Sew and pin each lining end panel. Right, so we need two lining end panels. We need a matching pair. Okay. So there's one and there's one. Now I had a bit of a moment when I was doing my practice one because I couldn't work out why it was so short and I lined it up and um, I'm sure it'll be obvious to you but I lined it up as though I was sewing it like this and I couldn't for the life of me work out how I'd managed to successfully write a book with such a rubbish I was like how is a massive gap there at the bottom and then I realized actually this is meant to go on this side and it's meant to go like that and then it matches so, <laughs> so I'll have it facing you how it should be um, facing and you can see at the top here there's a little angle so just line up that angled edge with the top edge and then the side and you've got your mark here of where your side seam starts and ends so pin to there and then you'll see it curves away wildly um, don't worry it's not wrong that's how it's meant to be when we um, have added the zip divider later so I'll pin along this edge okay. 
and then we're going to sew this together so it's like like sewing little wings on um, and in theory that should miss your zip pocket on the back if it doesn't it's not the end of the world um, because it's not like you're catching it in anything it's just if anything it's just going to secure it into place so we're going to start at that little mark there that we made on the pattern piece earlier we're going to start and end there so we will back stitch at that mark and we're using eighth of, uh, three eighths of an inch seam allowance that's one centimeter so i'm going to start with my needle down do a couple of back stitches on my regular stitch length number three on this machine then i'm going to go to the top not doing very well at not sewing over my pins am i Right, so get back to the top. Now, don't be tempted to overshoot that mark there at the bottom, okay? Only so as far as there or from there. So that's one wing attached. I'm gonna add the other one and then we'll press those seams open. So I'll turn it around to face me and I'm adding this one. If you think of it like a little owl, with its wings, then it's a bit easier to work out which edge to attach it to. Or a, I don't know, a Welsh lady with her. Just crossing over there. Oh, it makes me miss Wales. <laughs> so I'll pin as far as that mark. And do the same on this one. So I'll start at the top this time and then I'll stop at this second mark. Again, three eighths of an inch seam allowance. So this lining fabric I did say yesterday this is the bumbleberries from Lewis and Irene and um, I think it's their kind of blender fabric so they do it in lots and lots of different colors um, and I, do you know I've never actually looked twice at it I'll be honest I've never really chosen to sew with it but um, now that I've had it chosen for me I really like it actually right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna steam press these flat and then flip them out and give them a steam press okay and when we come to the other side we'll leave a turning gap so um, if you could try and remind me that'd be great because I'm sure to forget okay. give it a good shot of steam I don't know why steam helps so much but it just seems to sort of shrink the stitches set them into the seam which gives you a really neat finish Right, so I press that flat and now I'm going to open it up and it doesn't really matter which way your seam allowance is faced but I've got mine facing the side edges quite like a nice blender like this that it, um, you don't have to pattern match save a lot of time kind of blends it well I guess that's the point of them isn't it I guess that's why they call them blenders blends in nicely right. so that's one side of the lining done then for this pattern so we've got our lining main panel in the middle there and then the side edges you can see it a little bit better on the back so that's one side done I'll get the other two bits that we need. Now we need to remember to leave a turning gap. So I think I'll do that on this first side. And to do that, I'm going to add a pin at the top and a pin at the bottom, as I did before. And then part way along, I'm going to add a double pin 
in and that should hopefully remind me that between these double pins should be my turning gap and try and make it as large as you can um, but still have a good size amount of stitching either side of the turning gap so I'm going to sew to there so I'm going to back stitch sew to there back stitch and then I'm going to do the same as I did on my slip pocket so I'm going to increase my stitch length between the um, turning gap markers and then I'm going to decrease it back to my normal stitch length and back stitch here and then sew to the end and back stitch I'll swap you back so you can see what I'm doing I'm going to try not to sew through so many pins can you have a New Year's resolution on the, is it the last day of May, April, May? No, tomorrow's the last day of April. Okay, can I have a New Year's resolution on nearly the last day of April? Right, back stitch there before I hit the pins. Now I can take the pins out, I've increased my stitch length. This is a big bag, so we're leaving a stitch length, a uh, turning gap as big as we can in this one. I'm nearly at my marking there. Right. So I've got my turning gap there, so we can just ignore that for the minute and add the um, second wing. Should have called them wings, shouldn't I? Instead of edges, what did I call them? I can't remember. Side edges. So we don't need to leave a turning gap in this side, we can just carry them to the top. Oh gosh, I've got some very pink pins here. This is what happens when you sew through them. Well, this is what happens when you buy expensive pins because they look nice and they're not very practical. Best pins I ever had were from and they were the glass headed pins and um, they did eventually bend but lasted a good long while before they did. They were very pricey. Well I thought they were pricey at the time but now that I've bought these ones um, I'm not so sure they were. Anybody's got any questions? Um, yeah, so the sew fuse is um, so the normal sew fuse is more of a um, just a regular woven interfacing. The sew fuse plus is thicker, um, slightly more dense, and um, gives a little bit more stability. Um, so you can really use Sofuse Plus apparently in place of um, Decaville Light or Fusible Fleece possibly. I haven't tried the Sofuse Plus myself, only the Sofuse. Okay, so I'm giving that a good shot of steam and this is the edge that's got my turning gap in. So I want a nice bit of steam there. And then I'm going to do the same. So I've pressed them flat and then I'm going to open these out and with the seam allowances towards the side edges, give them a little press again. Good steam press. Funny, isn't it? I never iron any of my clothes and I deliberately buy clothes that don't need ironing. And yet on a bag, I wouldn't think of, I wouldn't dream of not pressing it as you go because I think you get a much, much nicer finish. Right, so this is the edge with my turning gap, so I'm just going to add a bit of extra steam to make sure those seam allowances fold back nicely when we come to close our turning gap. Now what you can do is 
go in and open that turning gap now. I'm going to wait until the very end to do that because I want to know that this panel is not going to stretch out of shape while I'm constructing my bag. But just remember um, that that's where you've left your turning gap. So when you come to um, turn it through, you don't panic too much. Right, so um, let's see how we're going. Right, so that panel's finished. And the other panel's finished. And we can put these to one side because we're going to construct our zipped divider next. So I'll just put those together so we know they're done. Now don't forget, this is where you put your magnetic snap in if you're using a magnetic snap. And I'll swap those for zipped divider panels. Now I'm saying that without checking. I better double check what the book says. Um, yes, that is where you add the magnetic snap. Right, so now we need a 14 inch zip. But remember, if you're using continuous zip, you always want to add at least two inches to that and um, pre-size to size because they can take a little bit. So I've got two zip divider panels out of my lining and two out of my exterior. And I'm going to put one of each together and one of each to one side. cut my zip to size now. Uh, now when I buy continuous zip I tend to put the zip pulls all on um, together to start so I don't lose them. So we'll just make sure that there's one that's nicely lined up. Right. don't have a video on adding um, heads to continuous zip at the moment but I believe one of the swoon um, videos does contain it and come back to it. right so uh, if I chop the end off here where it's not lined up so that I've got a nice straight end oh dear my paper scissors are not very sharp I usually use my fabric scissors to be honest but I thought I'd better look like I'm trying to protect them and so we need a 14 inch zip so I'm going to cut at least 16 inches but actually because I haven't pre-steamed this I think I'm going to take it to 17 inches just to be sure right, so I just lined up the edges with my finger and um, with my fingers well out of the way use my rotary cutter pop my zip there so this is my zip to size I'm just going to give it a little shot of steam make sure any shrinking it's going to do is already done they don't all shrink but if it's going to shrink you want it to shrink before you sew it in don't you right and now because um if I don't I'm likely to pull my zip pull off going to add a little bit of back stitching at the start and end of this zip to make sure that I don't pull the zip end off so I'm just going to pop it under and do a couple of um, back and forth and this is nylon tea that I'm using from um, Sally Tomato Sally Tomato depending on which side of the pond you are nice and secure and with both of those ends secure I'm going to mark the centers and I try to line it up because it's slightly longer so when I line it up it will be easy to line up I'm just using my chaco liner again this chalk washes out so well I'll do it on both sides I think just so there's no confusion about what's the centre and I need my um, so on my zip two 
exterior and two linings. If you're using four linings, it doesn't really matter which piece you have, but if you're having um, the same as me, exterior and lining, you'll need one exterior first and mark the center of that. So I like to mark it at the top and I, on one piece, I will mark the bottom as well because that will help me line it up when I go to insert it into my um, lining main panels. Now we need some tape again. Thank goodness I've got tape. And add a line of tape all the way along the top from edge to edge. Now this zips divider is also in the Jangles anchor bag and in the crisscross um, shoulder bag from the book. And I don't think it's anywhere else um, of my patterns, but you can use it on any, um, any pattern that you like, any sort of box bottom pattern. So now with my lining, my zip divider exterior right sides up and my zip right side down, match the centre and this is exactly the same as if you'd sew just a basic pouch for the minute. So it's exterior right sides up, zip right side down and then another line of tape and we'll add the lining panel right side down on top so you're sandwiching the zip in between and lining up the raw edge of the fabric with the edge of the zipper tape. using my quarter inch quilters tape again. Could do with a little waste paper basket the other side I think. I've got one this side for my fabric scraps. Need one the other side for my zip tape scraps. Right so I'll line up the centre again so that all my centres are matching. And line up the top for all edges. down. So now I'm going to sew through that using a, well, I think quarter inch will be fine on this because this one's a number five zip. So I'll use a quarter inch seam allowance on this one. Six mil if you are using metric. And back stitch at the start and the end. Pull that zip pull out of the way inside. So to do my foot, do the zip pull out of the way. Okay. It's so exactly the same as you would for a regular zip pouch. So you sew those in, fold them back, and give that a good press. Keep it away from the teeth. maybe I'll open it out first and press the seam allowances towards the lining before we get going any further. We've got a nice neat finish. Okay so fold them wrong sides together and then just pull gently on the zip tape here to help your fabric or encourage your fabric away from the edge of your zip. Just double check that that's far enough away on the back, yeah, because you don't want your um, fabric to be getting caught in your zip teeth as you're using it. So now I'm going to sew top stitch along the edge, one eighth of an inch away from the zip, or one eighth of an inch away from the edge of the fabric, sorry, not the zip. Again, same regular three, number three stitch length. zip pull out the way go to the end so you don't have to back stitch on this one because that's going to be enclosed each of these ends is going to be enclosed in your seam right 
so let's swap it back. So now we're going to do the same with the other two zip pockets. So which is the top? That could be the top for me. And make a little mark in the centre and a bit of tape along the top. Numbers do end up getting a bit sticky by the end of this bag, I think. Well, by the end of any that you're using tape on, I think. Right, so we'll pull that backing off and then with the um, edge of the zip that hasn't been sewn yet, match the centers and the raw edge of the fabric to the edge of the zip tape. So it's almost as though you're doing exactly the same as you did on the first edge, but you're just ignoring the fact that you've already done it on the first edge. If that makes any sense. And then we'll do the same again. So we'll add another bit of tape and then the lining. And then we'll have a look at, um, see if there's any questions. So if you've got any questions about the zip divider, um, you can give me a shout in comments. I will say give me a shout, but it's horrible being shouted at, isn't it? So just um, you can ask in comments. <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure you wouldn't shout. Right. So we'll mark my centre on this second panel and add that right sides down, matching centre. Oh, hang on, I've lost my centre now goodness I marked it on one so it should be about there-ish yeah and I'll line up um, just because I'm not 100% confident on my centers I'll make sure that my edges match as well so the edges of my fabric match on the sides there as well as matching on the top and then we'll sew it again with a quarter inch seam allowance just move my zip pull out of the way and then we'll do the same so we'll press it back away from the zip as we did before. Oh, now I can see my centre marks. Always the way, isn't it? So just pull the rest of this fabric and the zip away from your um, fabric. So away from this new side that we're pressing. And that will help it to, um, the seam just to pull out nice and neat. And double check on the back that that's not gonna get caught and press that into place as well. And then we can top stitch a second side. Oh, I should probably move my zip out of the way there. I'll start my needle down. Right, so essentially we've created nearly a zip pouch. So we'll see if there's any um, more questions. I'll swap you back. Let me just refill my water. I don't think I drank enough last night. I was talking too much. So I'm trying, to, trying a bit harder today. Well, excuse the sound of that pouring in. And let's see if we've got any questions. Um, right, let's have a look. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's go back as far as we go. Um, no, it's not in the UK. She's in the um, United States. I bought 10 yards 
and it worked out very reasonable. I didn't end up paying any extra customs fees in the postage. Um, I didn't get customs bill. So I don't know if that's where I just slipped through the net or if it's all included. I don't know. Um, I know, Sheila. So I saw somebody do it at retreat and they bought new continuous zip and immediately put all the pulls on. And I was like, oh, that's a really good idea. So then you just have your one zip tape rather than trying to uh, remember which ones are which. Um, yeah, Moira, have a look at um, the cost of it and the cost of shipping. Um, it calculates automatically for you. Uh, yes, VAT, unfortunately. Let's see. Uh, yeah, you could add the all-in-one pocket to the inside of the divider pocket. You can add anything you like. Just need to remember that the um, divider pocket doesn't have much holding it up. So you might want to add something like some Decaville light to that if you were going to add pockets inside on the divider pocket, um, just to make sure that that didn't flop down inside. Um, so Jackie, the um, all-in-one pocket, it's a, a credit card slots, lip balm pocket and slip pocket in one. Um, yeah, page 26 of the book and you can add that to any bag. Um, it tells you the finished dimensions, so you can make sure that that definitely fits. Right, so um, now we've got our divider, uh, zip divider. And I'm glad that I've used two different fabrics, actually, because this would be nice and easy for you to see. So I've got the right side of my fabric and the right side of my zip. And then on the back, I've got the right side of my fabric and the wrong side of my zip. So these two are essentially going to become my lining panels, and these are my exterior panels. So pull your zip to the middle, just so you know exactly where that zip pull is. And then match the right sides together. So I'm matching my two exterior panels and then just pull it up. So I've got here, that one is right side to right side and that one is right side to right side. Then, and it doesn't matter which order you do it, you pull one set, let me get these loose threads, pair down to meet the other pair and match up. So once you've pulled them down then make sure that your stack of four is nicely lined up. So before you do that just double check that your panels are all nicely lined up and if they are then when you pull them down it shouldn't pull anything out of shape or anything. So you should have a nice neat little stack of four pieces of fabric and I'll pin one side and then I'll sort of pull the other side open so you can see what's going on in this little stack in the middle as well okay so I've got here um, let me swap you I've got here my right side to right side and then again, right side to right side. So my stack of four is right sides to right sides. And match the side and bottom edges and just pin those into place. Now when we sew this, we're only actually gonna be sewing the corners. We're gonna leave the sides and the bottom raw. Um, Right, so we're going to be using one and a quarter inches for our bottom corners. Let me just turn this around so I can get it in the, uh, next to my sewing machine. So just line up your ruler at one and a quarter inches each side and add a little mark. And these um, dimensions are exactly the same for the Jangles Anchor bag and the um, crisscross shoulder bag. So you want one and a quarter inches from the corner there. And you can do this on any bag. You just need to adjust the width and the height of it. And then we're going to draw a line between those two marks to form a little triangle in the corner. So that's what we've got so far. We're going to do that on the other end as well. So we will end up with two nicely finished diagonal corners and raw edges on the side and the bottom. You have to trust me on this one. So 
So we are going to sew along those two triangle lines. And we'll back stitch at the start and the end. Just the corners. We'll do both corners on the diagonal. So then we can take the pins out and we're going to clip these corners. We're going to cut away from these corners. It's like the bigger scissors. And I leave about a quarter of an inch the other side of the stitching just for a bit of something to grip onto so the stitches don't pull. So once you've cut those then what I like to do also is just trim this extra bit of zip if you've got some. Trim it down so it matches the edges of the fabric. it helps to make sure that your zip pull is in the middle so you know it's not going to go flying off um, now you can reach through and find where your exterior fabrics are it doesn't really matter which which way because um, you can always turn it through but find your exterior fabrics and just pull it out so that it's right sides out and it's only attached really along the zip and those bottom corners and we're going to give that little press so these diagonal corners end up nice and neat and your um, so your zip at the top will be nice and neat and your bottom corners will be nice and neat. If you want to, you can get your crochet hook and just run it along there and make sure that's fully turned out before you give it a press. Just give that a nice little steam. It almost feels, with the sew fuse on it, and the um, so iron cottons, as you know, they're very, very sheeny feeling. It's probably not a real word, but they feel really soft. So then with the sew fuse added, it's taken this quilting cotton to almost a bit of a glazed cotton. Do you remember that? Um, back in the day, chintz and glazed cotton used to be quite popular in living rooms, but that's almost what it feels like with that um, sew fuse on it. Right, so here's our zip divider and we've got two finished corners and we've got the zip at the top. Now we need our panels and I think it's easiest to use the one with the pockets on first. So you're not having to manipulate too many layers. Now on the back of here we had our markings. There's my pencil. So we'll transfer those to the right side. Just within the seam allowance. We can see what we're doing. So on this lining panel, we've got our centre marking at the bottom and we've got our divider marking on either side. And I'm going to lay my zip divider in the middle. Now, in theory, one of these pieces should have a centre marking on it, so I can use that to line it up. But more importantly, the edges should match up with the edges on the bottom of the lining. I'll change view so you can see that. So my edge, edges of my zip divider should match up with the edge here. That's my centre. Actually, let's stay on this view so you can see what I'm doing. Now you can add a pin in there if you want. I'm going to, I'm going to add a clip, I think, just for a bit of variety. Right around there and right around there. Now we want our second lining panel and this is the one that doesn't have any pockets on. I'm going to place it on top, lining up the centre marks again and lining up these edges. Don't worry about these, you know, the rest of it. Just worry about this bottom edge at the moment. This is all we're um, worrying about. Now it does get a little bit thick here where these corners are. 
so you might possibly want to do so when you start sewing you might want to um, back stitch here get to this bit and do a couple of bits of back stitching where it's thick just to make sure that you've got through all layers um, and it's nice and secure it's uh, let me see one two three four five six seven layers no that can't be right must be eight layers so that's eight layers of quilting cotton um, or obviously if you're using something like wax canvas or coated cotton for your lining then you um, probably wouldn't have the interfacing on it right so we're going to start at the end here and again using the same 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and my regular stitch length my needle to break thing because I realised part way through that um, I've got a small needle in but it didn't so that's good okay so we've sewn the bottom edge and there's our zip divider sandwiched in between the, our layers let's check if there's any questions before we go any further um, I prefer oh, now Jackie if you go to Ikea take snacks because honestly, you go in and you're all excited and you see the lovely showrooms think, oh, yay. And then it gets really boring really quickly and you are lost and you haven't found what you need to find and you need some snacks and then you have some snacks. And then um, if you can find a nice wardrobe department, you can kind of sit in the wardrobes and have your snacks in peace privacy and then you get to the um, market section and you buy about a zillion tea lights so then you need snacks afterwards as well um, so I prefer nylon zips because metal zips you have to get the teeth out um, otherwise you risk your um, sewing machine needle oh, I should have said if you need captions there are captions on this video you just need to turn them on um, Yes, Ikea is too far away from us in our new house as well, um, but they do deliver. You just have to wait for the um, wait for the slot. Here in the UK, um, delivery is, I think it's £35, but, um, but they'll deliver as much as you, as you want. Um, so this is a new video. Jackie, this is a new video, but... Um, it's the same technique as is in the Jangles anchor bag. So you may have seen this technique in the um, Jangles. Um, so Kirsten, yes. So um, if you haven't worked it out yet, now this will all become revealed to you. Um, but yes. So this is the fun bit. This is my job to help you do that. So let's clear a little bit of space. So you've got here your two lining panels with your zip divider in between. What we're going to do now is line up this edge of the zip divider with our mark on the side seam, and it's got to it's got to go from here to here. So um, give it some welly, just manipulate it, fold it into place, and match up the top edge of your zip teeth with that edge there and add a little clip. A bit hard to do this um, and show you what I'm doing but I'll come back to it. Okay so we've attached that top part of our zip divider to where that mark is and you can see there's this extra bulk of fabric in here don't panic. So now that you've got your position on 
this side and on the back you can see you've got this bit of extra fabric here don't worry about it. okay that'll all become clear so you've got one side attached now you're going to pull this side the second lining piece to match so again matching up your marking with the top of the zips divider and actually in this side you can also match the top of the lining panels because they will match at this point I've also got the video um, for this and the Jangles anchor bag um, zips divider on my YouTube channel so if this doesn't feel clear enough you can go back and watch that one from the other point of view as well so we've clipped all the way along there and you can see it's pulling slightly there where you've sewn it into the base and you've got this extra sort of bulk of fabric here panic about that that's how it's meant to be and you've got your um, divider clipped into place on both of your side panels right so what we've done effectively is we've pulled this divider up and got this extra bit of fabric there where we've pulled it up. So we've pulled it up to meet that mark on the side and then added the second side into place. So now when we stitch, we're going to sew through all of these layers and it feels quite tight there because that's where the bottom seam is, but it will fit. And we're going to use our three eighths of an inch seam allowance, that's one centimetre going to back stitch at the start and the end and where you see it um, meet the um, side panels so where that finished corner is you can feel the bulk there I'm going to add a bit of extra back stitching and where you feel it finish where the um, top of the zip is add some extra back stitch in there as well to the top there so now we've got the zip divider attached into one side of our lining but we've still got this gap here so this is the bottom seam so the zip divider is sewn into the bottom seam and it's sewn into the side seam but it's got these finished corners on it there and what we're going to do to finish the lining is we're going to meet the side seam and the bottom seam and I'm going to open my seam allowances up so that I can make sure I match them perfectly and I'm going to add a pin in there and I like to do this I like to work from the side of the main panels not the side of the um, side panels so if you ever sew a bag with a gusset I find that the um, the way to not get puckers is to, let me turn you around so you can see, the way to not get puckers is to sew with the, um, the flat part down and then the part you're moulding to that flat part up. So that's what I'm going to do here. So I'm considering that this side seam is my flat part and this main panels is the part that I'm moulding to it. So I've matched my bottom and my um, side seam there. And now I'm just going to manipulate the rest of this fabric into this gentle curve here. And if you overstepped on your stitching at the end of the seam, do you remember I said don't over, don't shoot over, then that's going to show up here. So if you did that, just try and smooth it out as best you can, not get any puckers. Um, or you can unpick a few stitches. But where if you didn't, then when you go to pin this, it should just create a nice soft curve there on the edge of the side seam. Right, that looks puckered, but I think it's just where I've pressed it a bit wonky. Because as I'm manipulating that, it goes into shape nicely. I'm using pins for this one because I just want to be sure that it stays in place. If you've got um, particularly thick fabric, you might want to use a stapler in the seam allowance just to hold it in place. 
Right, so now I'm gonna, now in the book it tells you to do this slightly differently. It tells you to do the bottom seams and then the side seams and then do this curve. But I just wanna make sure that you see it all in one go. So you, we've sewn the bottom seam, sewn the side seam, and now we're gonna sew this bottom corner curve. And I'm gonna sew it with the um, lining main panels face up. And I'm starting where I finished the stitching. Do you remember when we stitched to that mark and I said don't overshoot the mark? So I'm starting around about there and I'm just going to do a couple of back stitches over it and then keep going. And it's same seam allowance, three eighths of an inch. Don't be afraid of slowing down or just um, leaving the needle down while you readjust. And as long as your fabric is nice and flat, all layers are nice and flat at exactly where you're stitching, you should be okay. And you won't get puckers. Don't worry if it looks like it's puckering elsewhere. As long as it's not puckered where you're sewing, you'll be fine. So I've got a nice curve there that we've sewn. Swap you back to the other view so you can see. Now this camera does keep flicking out every now and then, so just be aware of that. Right, so now this is the side seam. So I'll turn it around the right way. So this is right side up. And you can see we've got here, sandwiched in between is our zipped divider. I'm not holding this too well, am I? <laughs> okay so this side we haven't sewn yet but you can see on this one side we've got a zipped divider sandwiched neatly in between and we've still got a curve on the bottom we've got a nice gentle curve there um, and once you've checked i'd just like to have a little peek, peek inside and check there's no puckers nothing to unpick and redo that looks good to me so now i'm going to trim that seam allowance with pinking shears or well, somebody tried calling me I wonder who that was oh it was Lizzie have I gone offline maybe let's have a look oh hang on right let me know if I'm still here because I'm not sure if I am still here um, possible I'm not. Let's see, am I still here? Oh, I look like I'm still here. Okay, good. Right. Um, night, Moira. Sleep well. Oh, when I lean forward, this sound goes out. Okay, right. Let me change my microphone slightly and see if that helps. Thank you for letting me know. It's attached to my... Um, apron which is a bit awkward might be better on my um on my top is that better still here okay oh fabulous thank you very much good job i didn't do anything embarrassing thinking i wasn't here <laughs> so now i'm just going to trim the seam allowance around this curve with my pinking shears and just see You almost lost me. Oh, okay, you lost me for a part of my explanations. Okay, when I was attaching the pocket. Okay, I'll try to. Um, so I've left the other side, so we can. I can explain to you on the other side as well. I shall try to do less jiggling around, and hope that that's better. Is the sound slightly better now? Yeah. Okay. Great. Right, so one side of that is in. So we've got the bottom attached and one side and I've finished it completely. So we'll do the other side. And um, I'm glad I didn't do both sides at once. So now I've got the opportunity to explain it again. So we've got our lining here, our you know our um, side edge here and our zip divider here. And this is the other one pulled back. So we can transfer the markings onto the right side. I'm just trying to keep an eye on my um, comments here just in case there's anything I need to know. 
Right, so on the right side, I've popped my little marking there. Okay, so hopefully you can see this. Now I'm going to pull the zipped divider and the top of this zip divider, so the teeth, to meet that mark. And to do that, I don't know if you saw, I had to push this back. So this lining panel gets pushed back so that I can meet that mark there. Okay, so this is it flat and that's To do this, I just push that underneath back and meet the teeth to that mark at the top there. And I'm going to add a little clip into that to make sure that is in place. I'm trying to hold myself very still so I don't knock my microphone. <laughs> and I'll just make sure that that's straight along that edge and add another clip there. And you do have to give it a little little pull there to make sure that it's, um, you know, it's in place. So it's lined up nicely. So this is the edge. So that's the main panel, this is the edge. And I've lined up the zip divider, the top with that mark. And now this second side, I need to push that back so that again, the sides meet and I can match the top of the two lining panels together easily. And this mark on this second panel should match where the teeth are there. I have got this video um, on YouTube as well. So if you're finding this is not particularly clear, you can try that video and see if, um, see if I made more sense then. So just pull these extra bits and you can see that it's, um, it's attached on the bottom there, but not on the side. So we've got this finished corner of the zip dividers and just match those as best you can. So now we're going to sew down this entire side seam and you can see we've got the extra fabric here that we've manipulated out of the way. So don't panic about that, that's what gives us our shape. Well, there's no comment saying you can't hear me anymore so I think we're all okay. So I'll get on with sewing this one. Use our regular seam allowance, 3 eighths of an inch or one centimetre. I've added some back stitch in there where I've met, uh, where I've gone over the teeth of the zip and also where I go over the um, bottom bit where you can feel the bulk, just back stitch there. Right, here we go. Okay, so this time hopefully you heard my explanation and to the sides. Now, when you put this extra bulk here, swap back to here. So now I like to open my seam allowances on the bottom and the side seam and match those together as best you can. If you've used the seam allowances, um, you know, been fairly accurate, you should be okay with fitting this together in this rounded corner. Okay, so I've matched my side and my bottom seams. And now we're gonna match the rest of these edges to form a really nice curve. And it's always easiest to do if you consider that this is your flat edge and then this the main panels is what you're fitting to that flat edge. So just gently curve it around. And if you didn't go past this stitching mark um, where your side seams start and end, then you should be okay with this. It should fit quite nicely. So just gently tug that into place, manipulate it into place. Give it a little um, Give it a little encouragement if it's not quite right to flatten out. 
and if you do find that you've got a bit extra or a bit of a pucker just move that extra fabric to this centre seam or this side seam because it's not going to be seen there it's hidden behind the zip divider right so now when I sew it I'm going to sew it with that side down so I'm going to sew it with the side edge down and the main lining panels side up so popping it underneath and I'm matching my needle to where the back stitching is for where we stopped and started up and I'm going to sew um, using my regular seam allowance my regular stitch length so I'll start with my needle down and it doesn't matter if you've got a few puckers as long as the two pieces of fabric that you're sewing under your foot are completely flat you'll be fine you won't get any puckers in your seam so just manipulate them how you need to No rush on this one. Right. Okay, so we've sewn that curve there. And just pop your hand in and check there's no puckers or you can't feel any puckers. Oh, hang on, I've got a pin here. Take the pin out. Just double check there's no puckers all the way around there before you... Um, trim that seam so now I can use my pinking shears to trim that seam I wonder if you'll be able to see a bit better on this view yeah so we can just trim the excess and I like to do this with pinking shears if you haven't got pinking shears then you can clip notches into the um, seam allowance of the curve but it just helps the curves to sit really nice and neat then when you've pushed your bag in. Okay. So, there we go. Oh, let me turn you back. You can't see what we're doing. So there we go. So, in theory, all of your edges should now be attached to each other. So, you should have all of this completely sewn round the corner. Gives you a nice curve. And inside you've got your zip pocket and slip pocket on one side and your zip divider suspended in between and that's quite nice and firm there and you can do your zip up again because you've finished sewing that now so this is the inside of our bags completely finished this is lining done so you've got there um, I'm trying to show you the inside as best I can but I'm not sure that that's really the best view <laughs> but that's what you've got so you've got a really big space in here it's perfect for files and folders and books and things and you've got your um, secure zip divider in the middle there and you've got your zip pocket and your slip pocket so you can put your personal things in here um, as well so if you're using this for work or for school or something you don't have to worry about your you know your I don't know, lip balm and things rolling around in the bottom. You can put those in the smaller pockets at the side. So, oh, the camera cut off then, sorry. Um, so there we go. So that's the lining completely done for our city tote. So when we come back tomorrow, we'll do, we'll probably start with the handles. No, so we'll go back and we'll make sure that all of the markings are transferred over and um, we've got all of the patterns ready for the exterior. Then we'll do the handles because otherwise I'll forget and I'll put them off till last and then I'll never do them. So if I say that I'll do them with you first, then that will make me do them. So thank you very much for that. <laughs> and then um, tomorrow, once we've done that, so we'll um, sew our exteriors, we'll sew our handles, we'll put it all together and we'll turn it through and we'll end up with a lovely bag. So that's our linings done so far. It doesn't look very pretty to sit on the worktop there, does it? I might turn it out. I wonder if I can turn it out and admire it. Probably won't work because of the zip divider. But 
It's why I like to do the exterior first sometimes so that you can sit it on your cutting table and admire it. Yeah, it doesn't really work, does it? <laughs> Looks nice on that side with a pocket. Not so good on the other side with a zip divider. <laughs> So if you want to get your um, lining sewn up ready for tomorrow, you can. You don't have to sew along with me. You can always come back to this at another time. You can always replay it. There are captions, so if you need the captions, do turn them on. Um, I've set them to auto-generate. Unfortunately, they're Facebook auto-generated, so how accurate they are, I don't know. Um, let's double check if there are any um, other questions or queries before we log off. Um, thank you for your patience. I'm not sure why my microphone cut off there, but at least the cameras are mostly um, mostly working today. Uh, yeah, it is big actually. It's um, it's very big. I'll show you the one that I've made out of the um, other one. Obviously, I still didn't finish it because I said I was going to finish it by today, and I didn't. So this is the one um, that I made just to double check that I was confident on, you know, because I've designed this good 18 months ago um, so I thought I'd better double check I know what I'm doing before I demonstrate it and of course once I started it all came flooding back because you know I kind of well I just thought what what would I do um, so this is the so this fabric in the center this was gifted to me by TT from patch and mix crafts um, not for promotional purposes just because she's a lovely lady and so this is Ankara wax fabric that she's gifted to me. So um, I've paired that with some red cork. And red is really not my colour. It's my least favourite colour. But it just goes so well, doesn't it? Um, so it is a fairly big size. And then the inside of this one is pink and gold. And I've got gold hardware for that. So who knows when I'll get this one finished. I'd like to say tomorrow, but who knows? <laughs> And then my fabric for the exterior of this one. Oh, so it's all the way over there. Um, let me see if I can show you from my scraps or my leftovers. So um, the exterior is this fairy clocks from Lewis and Irene, which was gifted to me for promotional purposes. And I've paired it with this um, kind of gray brown taupe faux leather so in my lining I've used the exterior fabric for my zipped divider and for my slip pocket just as a little fun pop of extra colour in there so when we're doing the exterior tomorrow these are the fabrics that I'll be using um, so let's see if there is any other questions or if I'm still live who knows um, lovely okay um yes it is very big i can't wait to see yours so if you've got lining fabrics um to show us please do show us so put them in comments or put them in the group show us your lining show us your exterior fabrics i'd love to see what you're making with me so i'll see you tomorrow seven o'clock thank you for joining us if you've got any other questions pop them in the comments and i'll go through and answer them um as i can either tonight or tomorrow but I appreciate you being here. Thank you. So I'll see you tomorrow for part three of the City Tote Sew so Along. And we'll finish it off. So we'll do the exterior. We'll do the handles. We'll do the hardware. And we'll put it all together. So I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs>